First place of A1. So, what will happen? This number x, whatever be the decimals after the first place, it is not going to be equal to A1. x1 will be different from A1. Is that okay? x1 will be different from A1 because at the first decimal place they are different. It differs from the first decimal place of A1. So, x1 is not, x is not going to be equal to A1. Now, I have a method of doing look at A2, look at the second place of A2, pick up some x2 which is different from the second place digit whatever appears in the decimal representation of A2. It will be 0, 1 to 9, right? Something. So, pick up some whatever comes, pick up some different one. So, what will happen? This will also be different from A2 and I can go on doing it x n. So, what will be x n? x n will, will be the number, the natural, uh, natural uh, the non negative number between 0 and 9, which is different from the nth place of a n and go on doing it. So, I have a inductive way of writing knowing the nth place I have can construct the next place right. Is it ok? So, what can you say about this number x? x is a real number right. Is x a real number? This is a decimal representation we have given you right. I have given a decimal representation of x. It is a real number x is not equal to a n for every n because at the nth place it differs from the nth decimal nth place of a n whatever digit comes. So, it cannot be equal two decimals are equal if all are equal right simply. So, I have produced an x in R which is not equal to no, that is a contradiction. because every real number must be one of the ans and we have produce a real number which is not equal to any one of the ans so that solves the problem yes okay yep what No, 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 no. I want to construct, I want to construct a real number which is different from each one of AIs, right. So, the method suggested is the following. Let us write a decimal representation of that number. Writing a number is same as giving a decimal expression for that number, right. Is that okay? The how is the decimal representation constructed? And I keep in mind that two real numbers are different if at some place in the decimal representation those differ right. So, keeping that in mind I am constructing x at the first place it is different from a 1 at the second place it is different from a 2 and so on that is all nothing more than that. That way x will be different from each one of the a n s and this 0 dot x 1 x 2 x n will be a real number right because I am saying this is a decimal representation of the x I am constructing. So, it must be one of the a n's which is not true because it is not equal it has to be also one of them. So, that is a contradiction right that is the way anything about infinity is proved still not ok. Recording should you do? Okay, okay. Anyway, just at this stage, probably let me just. Uh, so, here is 1, 
to n. Let us write something. It is not the number line. Okay, I am just probably I should not uh, give a picture of that. Let me just write one less than two, less than three, less than n. The number of elements in natural numbers. Let us denote it by something called. It is called L F naught. Okay. So this is called L F naught. L F is the Greek letter, like n and zero is L. Y zero you will soon see. And this thing, there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between this and real numbers. So how many real numbers are there? You say uncountable. Let us give it a name. Let us. This is denoted by small c. So that is that is small c. So that is this is n, and that is r. That is small c. So that is cardinality of continuum. That is c. They are continuous of points, kind of thing. And in some sense, this is less than this. Right, because there is no one-to-one -one map, but n is sitting inside it. Right, so it is is it reasonable to say that n naught is strictly less than c? It doesn't make sense because both are infinities. But we can intuitively say that this is a kind of relation between them. Right? Question in mathematics, a very deep one: Is there anything in between? N and C. Natural numbers, one infinity. Real numbers, another infinity. Is there any other infinity in between them or not? One question. Are there infinities beyond C? Are there infinities beyond C? That means, is there a set? Whose number of elements is much more than C, but R is sitting inside it. Like n is sitting inside R, R should be inside something which is much bigger. So I think I will stop here by saying: Look at the power set of real numbers. How many elements do you think power set of real numbers has? So keep thinking. Okay, let us come back to our. Uh, Uh, lecture for today so so consequences of uh, of lub property so one consequence we said lub implies what we called as a sequential completeness that is saying that every monotonically increasing sequence that is bounded above is convergent so this is what we had proved last time okay so second to prove the second thing first observation so observe we started looking at convergent implies it is cauchy right that we have seen last time that if a sequence is convergent it must be cauchy that means elements of the sequence must be coming close and close to each other oh, okay so Let me add here. So, well, I need a page more. Okay. All right. Observe. Uh, let me give it some numbers. One, two. Cauchy implies it is bounded. Want to claim that if a sequence is Cauchy, elements are coming closer. 
right? It cannot grow. It cannot become very very large or very very small. So intuitively, every Cauchy sequence must be bounded. So let us prove that. Uh, proof is uh, quite so con bounded. So proof. So let us take uh, epsilon greater than zero given. There exists some n naught such that mod of a n minus a m is less than epsilon for every n bigger than or equal to n naught. Right? That is Cauchyness. So let us start a n naught. Here is a n naught. Right, n naught is now known, and that means for all n bigger than n naught, everything is close to each other. That means if I take a n naught minus epsilon and a n naught plus epsilon, then everything must be inside, right? After the sage n naught, is it okay? Because they are close to each other. So, how many will be outside? Maybe a one, maybe a two, maybe a not minus one. Again, finitely many. So, I can take the like we have shown. Every convergent is bounded. Same proof repeated. Essentially saying that if it's Cauchy, then it must be bounded. The minimum of a one, a two, a and not minus one and a not minus epsilon. Call it alpha. Maximum of a one, a two, a n not minus one, and a n not plus alpha, uh, epsilon as beta. Then everything will be inside. So let me so continue. Is that okay? Same proof, basically same idea. Okay. So Cauchy implies bounded, and here is the third observation. Every sequence has a monotone subsequence. Given any sequence, it should have a subsequence. We define the notion of a subsequence, right? Picking up elements of the sequence, but going ahead and ahead, right? So the claim is: given a sequence, there must be a subsequence which is monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. It should be a monoton sequence. So I try to give you a visualization of this. Let us imagine the sequence looks like this, right? This is the first one is a one, so this is a one, a two, and so on. What do you observe in this picture? That after this stage, right? I am able to see the height of every building, top of every building, right? Nothing is hidden from me, right? So let us. Look at those numbers n, those indices n. Say that whenever m is bigger than n, then a m is bigger than a n. Right? For example, here, except for this, everything else is okay. So the set. Let us look at the set. Let us call it as C to be the set of all n such that x m. Uh, uh, what is the sequence given to us? We have we written? Okay, so let x n be the given sequence. Let x n be the sequence which is given to me. So look at the indices n. Say that x n, x m is bigger than x n if m is bigger than n. So what we are saying is, at any place you are standing. Look at the buildings. After that, you are able to see all of them, right? Is it okay? So this set L C is well-defined set. Okay. Now, what are the possibilities? It may be a empty set, right? So case one, C is empty. That means what? That means this statement is not true. So whenever m is bigger than n, x m is less than or equal to x n. Is it okay? But that means if I take n and n plus one, then what is the relation between x n and x m? 
n plus 1 is bigger than n. So, x n plus 1 should be less than or equal to x n for every n. And what does that mean? Sequence is monotonically decreasing. Is okay? If this is so, this implies x n is monotonically decreasing. Sequence itself is monotonically decreasing. Right? What is the second possibility? It is a finite set. C is non empty, but is finite. Right? C is not equal to empty, but finite. If it is a finite set, it is a set of subset of natural numbers, right? If it is finite, there is some largest element in it by the upper bound property, it must have a largest element, right? What happens after that largest element? This property should not be true, right? This property x m bigger than x n for m bigger than or bigger than n is not true. That means, what after finite number of steps, finite number of elements, after that the sequence starts decreasing, right. So, is that okay if everybody implies that sequence is monotonically decreasing after finite number of elements. Understand what I am saying? If it is a finite step, C is a finite set, it has a largest element, right? Call it n naught something. Then after n naught what happens? After n naught whenever m is bigger than n, x m will be less than or equal to or strictly less than x n. Is that okay? Because here we have to be bigger than negation of that. We have collected all those for which this is true and that is a finite set. right? So, pick up the largest number of them that is n naught. Right? After that none of the indices n can be inside the set C, because we have taken the largest of C. That means what? That means after that stage n naught, if m is bigger than n, then x m is less than x n. Right? That means after that stage, the sequence is monotonically decreasing. Okay? So, that is what I have written. So, after that stage it is. So, case 3. that C is not empty, but infinite. So, that means what? It is an infinite set. So, what does infinite mean? Whenever given any element in C, right? it is not bounded. There is something beyond that also possible. So, given any n in C, there is some stage k n right, which is also in C. Is that okay? Because it is infinite. So, if you like, let us write it as so let C be equal to it is an infinite set. So, let me write k 1. Uh, so, I can write it as k 1 less than k 2 less than k 3. So, this is the set. Uh, I should not be writing then less than that, because it does not make sense of saying. You understand? Uh, so, let okay, so let me write let C be equal to k 1, k 2, k n and so on. It is an infinite set, such that k 1 is strictly less than k 2, strictly less than is okay. Right? k 2 is bigger than k 1. So, x k 2 should be bigger than x right. So, this is a monotonically in monotonically increasing sequence is monotonically increasing. Is that ok? Because all are elements of C k n plus 1 is bigger than k n. So, x k n plus 1 should be bigger than 
are equal to x k n because they are in C. So, I have got a infinite number of elements of C of the sequence that is a sub sequence which is monotonically increasing. Is that okay? Everybody clear about it? Right? Okay. So, that is something saying if you want to look at the pictures, see given this, I am able to see one, right? But next one I am not able to see, but I go here, I am this I am able to see the next one. So, this is going to be my k1 and this is going to be my k2 and such kind of things, right? Is it okay? So, every sequence has got a sub sequence which is monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. So, let us write a consequence of that. If uh, every sequence that is bounded has a convergent subsequence so given a sequence which is bounded by the previous property it has a monotonically increasing or decreasing subsequence so that is monotonically increasing or decreasing and bounded that subsequence so must converge by our earlier property sequential completeness right so, we have to show is every sequence that is bounded has a convergent subsequence and this property goes by the name the Bolzano Vistras property. This goes by the name of Bolzano Vistras property. Now, let us look at the fifth consequence of what we are doing. If x n is Cauchy then it has a convergent subsequence. Why? So, we said Cauchy sequence is bounded right. So, and just now we said every bounded sequence must have a convergent subsequence. So, if a sequence is Cauchy, it has got a convergent subsequence and 6. If a Cauchy sequence has a convergent subsequence then the sequence itself is convergent. If a sequence is Cauchy, elements are coming close to each other and if it has a subsequence which is convergent, is it clear that the sequence itself must converge to that limit? Not clear? Okay. So, let us try to understand. So, let us write, try to write a proof of this. So, let us write a sequence x n v Cauchy. Let x k n be a convergent subsequence. Uh, I should right better be a convergent subsequence. So, let, let us say x k n converges to L. Yeah, So, that is a every Cauchy sequence then it has a convergent subsequence because Cauchy is bounded every Cauchy sequence is bounded and every sequence has got a monotonically increasing or decreasing subsequence. So, every Cauchy sequence right every see, see if a sequence is bounded it must have a convergent subsequence in particular cauchy is bounded so it will have a convergent subsequence 
right? Because every sequence has got a monoton subsequence, but that monoton subsequence may not be bounded, right? But if a sequence is Cauchy, then it is bounded. So that subsequence will be monoton and bounded, and hence convergent, right? So if sequence is Cauchy, then it has a convergent subsequence because it is bounded. Now what we are saying is, if a Cauchy sequence, we already know that it has a convergent subsequence actually. But what we are saying is that subsequence converges to L implies the sequence itself must converge to L. That is what we are trying to say, right? So if a sequence X n is Cauchy, let us assume it has a convergent subsequence X n k converges to L. So claim. X n itself converges to L. Right? Why is that? So what we want to show? So let epsilon greater than zero be given. Right? Here is L. Here is L minus epsilon, and here is L plus epsilon. Right? What we have to show that X n is convergent. After some stage, all the X n's must come inside it. But what we know, elements of the subsequence come inside, right? So given there exists some n naught such that what happens? X k n belongs to L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon for every n bigger than n naught, right? Because the subsequence is convergent. So here is my x k n naught, but the sequence is Cauchy. The sequence is Cauchy. That means what? Elements are coming closer to each other. So after some stage, after some stage, elements will be closer to this elements of the subsequence also, right? Because whole elements are coming. So I can say without loss of generality, my x n is also close to x k n naught for n bigger than. It will be some other stage, but I can take the maximum of the two stages if you want, right? Cauchy says x n and x m are close by distance epsilon for n bigger than some stage n one. So if I take the stage bigger than n one and n zero, that tail, then what will happen? X k n will be inside L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon, and X n also will be inside, right? For n bigger than n naught. And what does that mean? That means sequence is convergent. X k n is inside, and X n is closer to X k n. So both have to be inside that, right? That's all we are saying. Nothing more than that. So let us write that. Also, so let us say. Without loss of generality, by Cauchy's, x n belongs to L minus epsilon, uh, x n uh, and x k n, x n and uh, x n, x k n, both belong to L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. Right? Is that okay? That is the cosiness, but that is same as saying implies x n converges to L because x n is coming inside L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon for n bigger than n naught. Right? Is it okay? So that proves that this fact. That if a Cauchy sequence has a convergent subsequence, then the sub then the sequence itself must converge. So what we are saying now, take a Cauchy sequence. Cauchy is bounded. Cauchy has got a monoton subsequence, so that must converge because it is bounded. So Cauchy sequence also converges. Earlier we proved every convergent is. Cauchy, and now we are proving the converse that every we proved convergent is Cauchy. Now we are proving every Cauchy is also 
convergent right so all this together so here is l minus epsilon here is l plus epsilon by convergence of subsequence right this must have x k n inside it for n bigger than n not but for n bigger than n not right if you like or some other stage x n must be closer to x k n by coshiness there is a stage so the tail of the sequence elements are closer i can assume that stage is same as this one or you can take any other tail bigger than that right so after some stage right k n's are close to l and x n's are close to k n right then where is x n x n are close to l that's all nothing more than that is it okay so that is so finally let us write seventh koshi implies convergent so every koshi sequence in the reals is also convergent so there is a very important property of real numbers because this property is not true for rational numbers there are sequences of rational numbers which are cauchy but are not convergent to irrational they will of course converge because they are right they will converge to a real number so let us try to see an example of that so all these steps are okay let us me just revise what we have done if is convergent then it is cauchy if a sequence is convergent then it is Cauchy. We put the first thing. Every sequence has a subsequence which is either increasing or decreasing. That building's heights. Every bounded. If a sequence is bounded, it has a convergent subsequence because if a sequence is bounded by the previous one, it has got a monotonically increasing or decreasing subsequence, and hence it will converge. Cauchy sequence is always bounded. We proved that. And if a sequence is Uh, has a convergent subsequence converging to say then no i think this th there is a typo here uh, if is a cauchy sequence which has a convergent subsequence converging to alpha then this itself must converge to right because a sequence can have many different sequences convergent sub right so it so this one there is a um, step missing if a sequence alpha n is Cauchy and has a convergent subsequence, then the sequence itself must converge. That is what we proved. So every Cauchy sequence is convergent. So LUB property is also equivalent to saying every convergent sequence is Cauchy. Right? A sequence is convergent if and only if it is Cauchy. So this is called the Cauchy completeness of real numbers, and that is equivalent to. LUB property, right? Because as a consequence of that, we are showing. Okay.